Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Since 1936, the American Hockey League has been one of the highest levels of competition that the sport has to offer. Surpassed only by the NHL in North America, and regarded as the second or third best league across the entire hockey world depending on who you ask, the AHL has become a vital stepping stone for many NHL regulars and a breeding ground for the sport's next big stars. After all, the current season of play recently saw 597 minor league graduates suit up on an opening night roster in the NHL. That's more than 82% of the league's entire player base. Though the AHL now operates as a developmental league, since each team is directly affiliated with an NHL franchise, this hasn't always been the case during its 85-year lifespan. Sure, the A has always played second fiddle to the show, but there have been many hockey greats who have spent plenty of time in the minors and carved out pretty successful careers while they were at it too. For example, there are 53 players who have suited up in over 750 AHL games, 18 players who have scored over 750 points, and nearly 300 players who have spent parts of 10 seasons on an AHL roster. You don't play a full decade in one league if it isn't worth your time, you know. However, one player stands head and shoulders above the competition and has gone down in history as the best the league has ever seen. This is the story of Willie Marshall, the AHL's greatest of all time. In order to tell this fascinating tale, allow me to take you all the way back to 1948, when 17-year-old forward Willie Marshall made his way to the St. Michael's College School in Toronto and joined the majors for the upcoming 48-49 season. Over the next two years, Marshall would quickly develop into a vital member for his new team, as he became the majors' captain and their leading scorer, thanks to potting 97 points in just 80 regular season games. At the time, every player on St. Michael's roster was considered property of the NHL's Toronto Maple Leafs, meaning that they were essentially prospects within the Leafs organisation who could be handpicked by the team to join Toronto and get their first taste of the show if they impressed their parent club. As you can imagine, Marshall's strong production had begun to catch the Leafs' attention as he had scored at well over a point per game in each of his last two seasons. However, the forward was about to make a move that would change the course of his career forever. Before the 50-51 season got underway, Marshall decided to leave St. Michael's behind and move to a rival team in the same league, as he was given a lucrative offer in order to join the Guelph Biltmores. After playing his first four games with the team, and after scoring seven points in that span, the 19-year-old was told that he would be returning to St. Michael's for the rest of the season. And why was Marshall forced to rejoin the Majors? Because Leafs owner Con Smythe had found a way to get Marshall's deal with the Biltmores overturned in order to keep the high-scoring forward within the Leafs organisation. Unfortunately for Marshall though, his attempted defection to Guelph would come back to haunt him in a big way. After spending the rest of the 50-51 season with the Majors, and after scoring 59 points in just 43 games with the team, Marshall visited Con Smythe at his office in Maple Leaf Gardens in an attempt to apologise for his move to Guelph, make amends for any bad blood that he had caused between them, and restart their relationship on the right foot. However, Marshall would be left hung out to dry as the Leafs' owner refused to meet him. Still furious that his rising star had left St. Michael's in the pursuit of a cheap payday, Smythe instead decided to inform the youngster that he would never see daylight in the National Hockey League. Though Marshall would suit up in the NHL several times over the coming years, Smythe would ensure that he kept to his word. For the remainder of the 1950s, Marshall would find himself bouncing back and forth between the Leafs and the Miners as he looked to earn a full-time roster spot in the NHL. Though many considered him to be ready for the bigs, Marshall would instead spend the remainder of the decade predominantly in the AHL, where he wasted little time becoming one of, if not the best player outside of the show. Known for his gifted playmaking skills and his dangerous shot, Marshall would score 94 points in 84 games with the MMHL Charlottetown Islanders during the 51-52 season, before joining the AHL's Pittsburgh Hornets for the following 52-53 season. 
In fact, the Canadian forward would end up spending the next four years of his career primarily with the Hornets, where he quickly became one of the most productive players across the entire American League, thanks to potting 284 points in just 227 AHL games. Not only would he score at over a point per game pace in every single season, and earn a place on the AHL's 1956 first All-Star team, Marshall's strong play throughout that period would also help him get his hands on some silverware, as his 16 points in 10 postseason games helped Pittsburgh clinch the 1955 Calder Cup as AHL playoff champions. Following a 45-goal, 97-point campaign in just 58 games during the 55-56 season, the demise of the Hornets and a sale to the Detroit Red Wings meant that Marshall took his talents elsewhere in the league, but he would find himself grinding it out in the minors once more, as he joined the AHL's Hershey Bears for the 56-57 season. Though he was still on the outside looking in, the forward would somehow take his game to an even greater level. With 35 goals and 94 points during his debut year with Hershey, Marshall would produce a career year for himself during the following 57-58 season, as he potted an astounding 40 goals and 104 points in just 68 regular season games. Not only would these totals secure him another first-team All-Star berth, and the only John B. Sollenberger trophy of his career as the league's highest point scorer, his 19 points in 11 playoff games would also help him capture his second championship in four years, as he led the Bears to the 1958 Calder Cup. Once his second year in Hershey had concluded, Marshall was traded back to the Toronto Maple Leafs for the upcoming 58-59 season, where he began the year with the AHL's Rochester Americans, but after scoring 23 points in 19 games with the team, he was loaned back to Hershey for the rest of the year. From there, the 28-year-old forward picked up right where he left off the season prior by potting 38 points in 37 regular season games, while his 7 points in 9 playoff games helped the Bears secure their second consecutive Calder Cup and the third championship of Marshall's pro career. So yeah, Marshall was doing pretty well for himself during his time in the minors. Despite his unprecedented production in the AHL, and despite him showcasing his talents for two different NHL organizations over the course of the decade, Marshall was unable to secure a permanent position in the show at any point during this span. In fact, many people began to believe that Marshall had been blackballed by Con Smythe and the Leafs organization during both of his tenures with the team, since the forward would attend the Leafs preseason training camp year after year, but he'd never seemed to make the cut. If that wasn't bad enough, there were even some seasons where Marshall didn't earn an invite to camp, which raised plenty of eyebrows across the sport since he had produced outstanding scoring numbers every single year and he had been the driving force behind three different championship wins. The guy was clearly ready to take the next step in his career. What more could he do to prove it at that point in time? That said, Marshall did find himself on an NHL roster at several points during this span. Between 1952 and 1959, Marshall took to the ice in 33 NHL games over parts of four seasons exclusively with the Leafs, but his limited ice time and his minimal role on the team led to him scoring just a single goal and six points in that span. Sure, he didn't exactly light the league on fire during his time in the show, so you could argue that he hadn't earned a roster spot and that he shouldn't have been given any more chances to do so regardless of how well he played in the minors but considering he found himself grinding it out in the Leafs' bottom six every single time he was called up to the roster, despite being known as a talented playmaker and a gifted goalscorer, Toronto didn't exactly put him in the best position to succeed now, did they? Now at this point in the video, it's probably worth reminding you that the NHL was comprised of just six different teams at the time, so finding a way to climb up the depth chart, force an already established player out of the lineup, and earn a full-time roster spot in the league was far more difficult than the 32-team NHL we have today. This situation also meant that teams could use the lack of roster spots as leverage against players, meaning they could pick and choose exactly who they wanted, and if a certain player wasn't happy about it, they could either work harder in the hopes of proving them wrong, spend their entire careers elsewhere trying to eke out a living in the minors, or simply quit altogether and take their careers in a completely different direction. 
After all, European hockey was still in its infancy at the domestic level, so taking their talents overseas and earning a decent chunk of change somewhere across the pond wasn't really a viable option at the time. As you can imagine, no one knew this reality better than Marshall, as his previous falling out with Con Smythe and his supposed blackballing from the Leafs had meant that his chances of cracking Toronto's roster were minimal at best and downright impossible at worst, so he could either suck it up and deal with it, or simply quit. Given that NHL players were making a fraction of the money that they make nowadays, and given that their minor league counterparts were making pennies in comparison even in that era, many career minor leaguers really had to love the game in order to carve out a decent career in the sport. Luckily for Marshall, his dedication to hockey would be well rewarded in the years to come. After a nine-game stint with the Leafs during the 58-59 season, Willie Marshall would never suit up in the NHL ever again for the rest of his pro career. And even though he hadn't been given the opportunity that he had so clearly deserved, the Canadian forward refused to give up on his dream of being a professional hockey player. Despite contemplating retirement after his final NHL stint, the forward decided that if he couldn't be the best player in the show, he would become the best player in the minor leagues instead. And thanks to his performance over the following years, he would do exactly that. Having joined the AHL full-time for the 59-60 season, Willie Marshall would spend the following four years of his career with the Hershey Bears, and wasted little time picking up right where he left off, as he continued to score at over a point-per-game pace every single year, en route to notching 334 points in just 270 regular season games. Following a 36-goal, 92-point year during the 62-63 season, and after earning a place on the AHL's second All-Star team during the prior 61-62 season, the 32-year-old forward joined the Providence Reds for the following 63-64 season. After spending three years with the Reds, and after producing a somewhat underwhelming 179 points in 211 games, especially when compared to his previous track record, the Canadian forward would move to his fifth AHL team as he joined the Baltimore Clippers for the 66-67 season. From there, Marshall would play the next half a decade with the Clippers, score a further 315 points in just 299 games, before leaving the AHL behind after parts of 19 years, and taking his talents to the IHL's Toledo Hornets for the 1971-72 season. However, this departure from the A wouldn't last very long. After scoring 47 points in 46 games with the Hornets, the 40-year-old forward would rejoin the AHL via the Rochester Americans for the rest of the year, where he scored 4 points in 10 games to conclude the season, before hanging up his skates and calling it a day on his long and illustrious career. So after trying and failing to make it to the NHL for the better part of a decade, after years of grinding it out in the minors in the hopes of one day earning a real opportunity in the show, Willie Marshall's lasting legacy on the game of hockey was far greater than anyone could have predicted. During his 20-year pro career, Willie Marshall would practically rewrite the AHL's record books, as his 523 goals, his 852 assists, and his 1,375 points in just 1,205 regular season games have become the highest totals in all four of these categories in league history to date. Not only that, Marshall would also set records for the most AHL hat-tricks with 25, the most playoff assists and points with 71 and 119 respectively, while also leading the league in scoring 13 times, reaching the 20-goal mark in each of his first 12 seasons in the league, and he also sits 5th place in scoring in Hershey Bears franchise history, despite last playing for the team nearly 60 years ago now. Given that the AHL serves primarily as a developmental league for the NHL, and given that the league doesn't house as many long-term veterans as it used to due to many other options for players overseas, it's likely that many of these records might never be broken for the rest of the AHL's existence. After all, someone would have to spend roughly two decades of their life almost exclusively in the minors, and score at well over a point per game pace for pretty much the entirety of that tenure. There is little to no chance of that happening in today's game. 
though his playing career may have ended over half a century ago now, in the many years since his retirement, Willie Marshall has continued to receive all sorts of awards and accolades to honour the impact that he had on the minor league game. Not only has his number 16 been retired by the Hershey Bears, and the league's leading goalscorer award been renamed to the Willie Marshall Award back in 2006, he was also one of the very first inductees to the AHL Hall of Fame as a member of their first class in 2006. Now that's how you carve out a career in the minors, eh folks? While Marshall has continued to earn praise for his hockey career, he has also taken his talents in a completely different direction since his retirement. During his later years, Marshall has supposedly become an avid author who has written an autobiography about his career titled The Willie Marshall Story, while also self-publishing numerous volumes of Christian poetry and non-fiction works on Christian history, theology, and doctrine. Hey, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it certainly sounds like he's been keeping himself busy, right? Though he will always be known as one of the best to never make it, Willie Marshall's unprecedented career in the minors and his refusal to give up on his dream prove that if you're talented enough, you work hard enough, you persevere long enough, and you love the game of hockey enough, it doesn't matter what level you play at, you can still go down in history as one of the greatest players that the sport has ever seen. Sure, he likely would have traded all of his accolades for a legitimate shot in the NHL, but I think it's fair to say that he did the best he could with the hand that he was dealt. I mean, the guy scored over 1,300 points in 1,200 games, won several championships, set a plethora of league records, and was one of the first entries to the AHL Hall of Fame. He certainly could have done a lot worse for himself, you know. I guess being blackballed by the Leafs ended up working out for him pretty well after all, eh, folks? And that was the story of the AHL's greatest player of all time. What do you guys think about Willie Marshall's illustrious career? Do you think that his records will remain in the years to come, or do you think he should have been given a longer look at the NHL level? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.